This is a, a kind of a, a deep question. Uh, is spirituality simply a byproduct of basic neuroscience? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, you don't the, think so. yeah, no. spirituality a byproduct. Uh, you know, we talked about this a little bit. We talked about this earlier with Eben Alexander's book, um, Proof of Heaven. Is that with you? No, no. I think someone, so. someone here talked about this. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this tendency in, in neuroscience to like spirituality. You can't have that and believe in how the brain works, and that they don't go together really. Um, you know, there's this. I think in the books that I write, there's this idea that the, the brain is failing. And as a result, the body will fail. And so people are, are facing their mortality. And so there's this sort of um, division between, there's this transcendence between, transcendence between the brain and the self. And this idea that you are more than your DNA, RNA, and proteins, that you are more than this collection of neurons in your head. And so I, I think that it, you know, everybody, this is going to depend on your religious background and how you're brought up and what you come to believe in your life. Um, but for me, I, as a neuroscientist, I believe that spirituality is outside of the cellular stuff. Um, yeah, I think spirituality has to do with energy and love and a universal source of energetic love. And it is, doesn't reside in your head. Do you, do you have a thought, Susan? I do. I mean, I guess I think that question is no different from asking, well, is love just a matter of brain chemistry? Is laughter just a matter of brain chemistry? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it kind of doesn't matter that much to our lived experience. Love still matters, right? I don't, like, I don't think anybody would discount that. And somehow if that were the question, it would seem more obvious. I'm not sure why, but it would. And so... I don't know. Maybe it's begging the question, but I don't think it's what really matters. I think lived experience is what matters. Yeah. You know, I'll take a slightly different uh, perspective on this. I mean, so what's impressive to me, you know, and Robert Wright wrote about this in Evolution of God, who's an author I really respect. Um, anytime, it, you know, all societies, hunter-gatherer societies around the world, no matter what the ecological conditions they're in, kind of develop these spiritual tendencies, right, of share a sense of the sacred, explanations of what happens after our bodies pass away, uh, music, ritual, collective dance and the like. And it, it re there's just this striking universality. And that tells us there's some kind of evolutionary tendency toward that adaptation or trait of being spiritual. So as a scientist, what I'm excited about is what is the core foundation to that experience? I think it's in awe, which is what we're studying a lot in our lab, a lot of mammals have very similar physical responses when they sort of expand the self like a spiritual experience. They fluff up their fur. There are new studies out of fish yet again. I thought you didn't know you learned so much about fish. <laughs> when fish encounter really challenging things in the environment, schools of fish will kind of vibrate together and become transcended and wear, wear little religious outfits. I'm kidding. but. Uh, <laughs> So that tells us there's some principle that is evolved and based in biological systems that is about spirituality. And we hadn't spoken all, all night really about the idea of awe, but it, is, it, it tends not to be the thing we think about. We think about maybe religion or love and what, yeah. the, what the brain's role is, but, but awe is something that we probably want to experience more and it comes so rarely, but it's, it's powerful. Right? It is. We have been lucky enough to spend a lot of time studying awe out in nature, awe in spiritual experiences, awe with respect to music, space. Uh, you know, we are very inventive in uh, what we create to produce awe. And, you know, it is proving to be one of these really powerful reorienters of the human uh, experience. It, it makes us more pro-social, it makes us more curious. Students are better at science if they feel awe. It calms the inflammation response. And this is just a couple of minutes out in the woods, right, where you just take a moment to contemplate. So I think it's going to be an, a different kind of quiet revolution. Mm -hmm.